When doing a literature search, the quality of the papers that you are able to find can directly impact the quality of the assignment that you are about to write. If you are able to find the best, most relevant, most recent papers, you are then able to understand those and translate those into your thesis, into your research and use them to find, for example, a gap in literature. That's why searching for literature is one of the most important skills that you can have as an academic or even as a student. And yes, there are traditional ways of doing it, which are of course manually searching on platforms like PubMed or Google Scholar to look for these papers and really inputting the correct terms to find them. Or the alternative is using more newer techniques using AI technologies, which as you know, if you've been following me for any amount of time on this platform that I'm really a fan of and I think is really helpful to automate some of those processes and make it slightly more efficient and easy for you when searching. If you want to see more videos like this on my channel, then don't forget to press the subscribe button and let me know how you found it in the comments down below. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do when starting a literature search is refining the keywords of the topic that you are going to be looking into. If you don't have refined keywords, then you are going to be sort of scrambling around, searching for random words, not really having a consistent search strategy. And this is really key. The strategy here is so important. So think about firstly the keywords. How do you find these keywords? Well, I'm sure you've probably read one or two papers so far or found sort of one source paper that you are kind of building up from. Use that paper, look at the keywords in the abstract. What are the subject specific keywords that cannot be, you know, cannot be taken out of that abstract? Look at the title. What are some of the words in that title that you think are representative of this particular topic? So that could be thinking about um, a disease type, that could be thinking about groups of people, ages maybe, um, regions, or anything that describes what it is that you are searching for. And then use those keywords, write them down, and that is going to be your search term and your focus for your search. Now, for today's video, I'm going to be focusing on helping you with this search using the R Discovery platform, which I have spoken about before on this platform and on this channel, and they are kindly sponsoring this video. I mean, I had already planned this video to talk about this particular topic with the R Discovery app because I honestly just think it's the best one you can use to search, organize, and bring all your papers together in a nice library. So let me show you how you can do it. Okay, so I've got it on my phone over here and I'm going to put it on screen here so you can also see uh, the process and what it looks like. You can also use it on desktop as well. I find it a lot easier to use it on my phone um, as I'm kind of, you know, just used to reading papers, translating them, saving them on a library and then of course it syncs to the desktop as well so you can use it on both if you really want to. So let's start off. So. Um, the first thing you want to do is once you've got those keywords, as I mentioned, you want to make sure that you are adjusting your research interests. So here you are ensuring that you are following the right topics that suit your research interests, AKA those keywords. So here I've already done this because of course I, I'm, I'm using it by myself. Um, so I've got here cytoskeleton organization, um, IQ gap one, organizational development, um, acting assembly. I've got so many, as you can see, you can also organize it even further by how important this topic is to you. For example, I've got act and assembly as really important because that is a key word when I look at research papers. Um, but something like IQ Gap Knockdown, that is important for me, but it's not something that I really want to search for every single time. So I'm happy for that to be moderate. You're also able to add topics that you're not interested in. And this is key if you really don't want to focus on those specific subjects. Uh, and then also you can add journals that you want to follow as well. So I'm following a few journals that are relevant to my field. So this is all to tailor your settings to ensure that when you are going on your feed and when you are getting notifications for papers, it is giving you the best possible result and the most relevant paper possible for your research area. So our discovery is a free app for students and researchers and it allows you to search for literature and to read research as well. And it creates an academic reading library so you can stay updated on the latest academic research from not only articles and journals, but also open access articles and also peer reviewed articles too. Now, let's say you want to go into even more depth when it comes to looking for papers. You can use advanced search terms. Now, you've probably heard of the Boolean search technique, and this is where you're looking at two particular keywords and you're inserting the word and or 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 other kind of combinations in order to tell the database that I'm looking for research that is including actin and myosin or actin or myosin. So it's giving me one or the other 
So the word end connects these two terms, so it gives you everything that's kind of highlighted and overlapped in the middle, and the word or will give you anything within that space or range of topic. So either by itself, together, or individually. These are all key words that you want to kind of mix up. And when you're doing this search, you can actually do this search on something like PubMed, for example, and this really goes into even more depth. And one of the great things about our discovery here is that you are able to look at the top 100 papers in your research area. So now that you've kind of categorized your keywords and you know what journals you want to follow and what topics you want to follow, you can just come and keep on checking, checking here or even set your notifications to get notified every time there's a new post or notified every single day. And you can just really see what the most recent papers are. So um, as I'm going down, I actually discovered quite a few papers here based on topics that I follow that I didn't actually find on, on platforms like PubMed, which is quite interesting. And you can keep on going down. If you feel like actually this topic isn't that relevant for me, I don't want to see this as much, you can say not relevant and then block one of those topics, which is actually really interesting and really relevant to help um, tailor the recommendations a lot more. Keep on going down. There was a paper that I saw earlier today that was actually a brand new paper that was published only last week. So these are the kind of papers that you'd have to really do a rigorous search for to find. And yeah, there you go, there's one. This was published on the 17th of October, so that's 10, 10 days ago. And I would have had to really do a deep search to find this on any other platform, but here it's already here. And when I go into it, as you can see, you can see the abstract, um, you can read the full text and connect your university account to it to get the full text from your institution. You can see similar papers and kind of see kind of related papers as well. So that's really cool. Now, the third thing you want to do is start to review your search. So you've got all these papers, you've got hundreds of papers that have popped up. How do you really narrow that down and get to the papers that are most relevant for you, for your literature, for your topic and for your reading? So one of the things I would highly recommend is looking at the date that these papers were published. Do you want papers that are only from the past five years? Do you want papers that are review papers only? Do you want original research papers only? What kind of research do you want in order to really tailor it and hone it down to the most important papers for you? And then you want to exclude any papers that are not relevant to you. So that could be limiting using the filter. I'm on any platform that you use, if you use PubMed, Google Scholar, Our Discovery, all these platforms have filters. They allow you to really filter it down to the year type, the journal type, um, the author names, and just anything in between. So you can really filter it down to only get the research papers that are most relevant to you. And one of the ways that Our Discovery can help you with this is this can take a lot of time, uh, you know, reading all these papers, narrowing it down can take a lot of time. One of the things that you can do to save yourself some time is you can actually, this is a paper that I'm interested in for example, I can actually download the audio version of it. So it means that I can listen to it from my library as I'm on the go. So I could be on the tube and listen to it, I could just be like doing something on the side and listen to it. So I'm able to determine whether they're important or not without actually taking a, a lot of time to sit down and read through them. So for example here I've just, I've just done this so it's going to start playing. Finding thermodynamics of So yeah, that's, that's that for me. And I can also translate it. So if you go to the top here and you tap translate, you can translate it to any other language that um, is available over here, quite a few of them. And yeah, you can read on the go. It just helps you save lots of time when it comes to narrowing down those papers. Okay, so you've done the reading, you've found lots of papers, you've narrowed it down, and you now have a list of papers that you are interested in. It's so important that as you're doing this, you're staying organized. Between the time that you determined your keywords and the time you actually come to write your dissertation or your essay or thesis, this could be months, this could be a lo long, long time. So don't keep it to having to guess or kind of assume that you're going to remember what you read and why you thought it was relevant and the key things that you thought about it. So what I'd recommend you do is organize your papers into a library. The best way to do this is to do it as you read. So for example, as you're reading and as you're finding papers, you're saving them into specific bookmark areas that will tell you, okay, this would be interesting for this part of the topic. Because don't forget, you might have an overarching topic, but then you have subtopics in between that you might want to include in the methods or only in the results or for the discussion or for a specific part of your of your topic. So that's why it's so key. And again, with our discovery, you can do this really easily. So as you can see, I have a list of papers that have come up as I'm reading. And this is one that I thought was really interesting. And I'm going to save it. And I have a list, different lists. So I have a cytoskeleton list, and I could get one list and a cortex mobility list. I could even 
create more definition between those lists if I really want to define it even more. And then I could say, I wanna go and save it into side skeleton. So you can really see it nice and easily. It's been saved there. And I know that in the future, when I come to write, I've got a perfect, perfectly created list that I can come back to. The next thing that you, that would be really interesting actually to do is now that I've got this list, I can share it with other people. So this whole process of finding keywords and finding research papers that are interesting, someone else is doing it probably beside you in your lab group that you could kind of do it together. You can collaborate and just make, make it more efficient for yourself and save time. So one of the things that you can do is you can share and you can invite someone to collaborate with you and this will allow them to add more papers to that list or remove it or say actually it isn't that relevant and kind of take it out. So that's one of the things that you can do. And the other thing you can do is actually share it as a public reading list as well. So as you can see, my list right now is public and um, you can change it to make it private as well. But I've left it public because I think it'll be interesting for other people that are interested in this topic to be able to see the papers that I have included. And then lastly, I'm always talking about efficiency. I'm always talking about making sure that you're not having, you know, you're working smart, not hard. So again, one of the things that our discovery allows you to do is you can auto sync and integrate your referencing platform onto your R discovery app. So for example, I have, if I show you, I've integrated my Mendeley onto this and you can also integrate Zotero as well. And those are the most popular ones that people use. And it means that when I'm reading a paper, so let's take, for example, I'm reading this one. Let's go to one of the papers that I was reading. So this one, I can automatically export that and it'll export it to, to Mendeley for me. So it means that when I'm now coming to write and I now need to include this paper into my thesis, I'm not having to say, okay, what was that paper? And I have to find another referencing manager and then save it into there. It's just automatically exporting it for me. I can sync between them in an automated way. So yeah, that's pretty much this the process of how I would search for literature from the start, finding keywords, using a tool like our discovery to really make sure that you're getting the most the most recent most relevant papers pulled out for you saving and organizing it into a library sharing with others if you have to and being able to like work as a team with other people and then ensuring that everything is kind of synced between all your different technologies and all your different platforms. So if I'm using Mendeley, syncing the papers I found onto Mendeley to make sure that it's all seamless and I can use it as soon as I start writing. And yeah, if you're interested in checking out our discovery, it is, an, it is a free app, so do check it out. I'll leave the link to download it down below and let me know if you find it, it useful. I know loads of you use it and loads of you always tell me that you, you really enjoy it. So yeah, let me know how you find it. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Okay, bye. Thank you.